Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna start talking about double integrals over rectangular regions and how we can use them to find the volume underneath one of our three-dimensional surfaces. So before we write down the definition of a double integral and talk about how to compute such a thing, I wanna quickly review our single variable integrals. And so we look at our single variable definite integral, like the integral from a to b of our function f here, one of our important interpretations of that integral is that it finds the area between our function and the x-axis over the interval from a to b. Remember, the way we originally constructed one of these definite integrals was by using the limit of a Riemann sum. And remember what the Riemann sum itself did was it took our little region that we were trying to find the area of and it split it up into a bunch of strips of equal width and the width of each of those strips was what we called that quantity delta x. So we take our region of interest and we sliced it up into a bunch of strips of uniform width delta x and then we approximate the area inside of each of those strips using a rectangle. The width of that rectangle was our delta x value and the height was given by the value of our function f or this y value for get some given x value in each of those sub intervals. And so for a fixed value of n, we would use n rectangles in our approximating process, but when we took the limit as n goes to infinity, our approximation would become better and better and would approach the true value of the area between our curve and the x-axis. Eventually we talked about how we could use a antiderivative to help us evaluate this area algebraically, but it started with this area argument by decomposing it into a bunch of simple pieces, find the area of those simple pieces, and then putting them back together. And so our single integrals help us calculate some areas. Our double integrals are going to be motivated by helping us calculate some volumes. And so we're going to use a double integral to help us find the volume underneath our surface over some region. And the first types of regions we're going to look at are these rectangular regions. And so we're gonna be working with basically a three-dimensional version of the situation we were just talking about. And it's a bit harder to draw stuff in 3D, so we're gonna go ahead and use a computer image instead. And so here is a picture of our new scenario. We are now trying to find the volume underneath our surface given by z is equal to a function of x and y. So we wanna find the volume underneath our surface over this rectangular region that we are calling r. And so the steps we use to find the volume underneath our surface are gonna look very similar to the steps we used when constructing our definite integrals for a single variable. So instead of taking our interval of x values from a to b and slicing it into a bunch of equal width sub intervals, we're gonna take our rectangular region r and slice that up into a bunch of equal width rectangles. And so we'll have some x values that our rectangular region r runs through like from a to b again, and we're gonna go ahead and slice those x values up into n equal sub intervals. Our interval of y values will go through some different range of numbers like from c to d, and we'll split that up into some rectangles as well. And so now we have our rectangular region broken up into a bunch of smaller sub rectangular regions. The width of each of these rectangular regions is gonna be delta x, and the height is gonna be delta y. And so if we multiply these delta x and these delta y quantities together, we're gonna to get a little small unit of area that we might call delta a. And so now if we take this little unit area quantity, delta a or delta x times delta y, and multiply it by a height value, then we can create a little rectangular prism, and we can kind of see now that we, instead of slicing our area up into a bunch of rectangles, we're now taking the volume underneath our, our surface up and slicing it into a bunch of uh, rectangular prisms instead. And the way we find the volume of one of those singular rectangular prisms is we take that base area, delta A, which we can think of as delta X times delta Y, and multiply that by a height value that is coming from our function F of X comma Y. Well, that little quantity, F of X comma Y times delta X times delta Y, will give us one of our little rectangular prisms volumes. And then we have to do that for all the rectangular prisms that we have split our region up into. If we add all those together, then we're gonna have an approximation for the volume between our surface and the xy plane, or the volume underneath our surface over our rectangular region. And just like what happened with our single variable functions and integrals, as we take the limit of this process, our approximation is gonna get better and better, and it's going to approach the true now volume of the uh, region beneath our surface. All right, so writing down all the steps for our process gives us uh, a definition for volume underneath a surface, 
using a uh, double Riemann sum. And from that, we can define the double integral of a function f over a rectangular region r. And so the volume underneath our surface given by our function z is equal to f of xy is going to be denoted by v. And it's going to be the limit where both m and n are eventually going to infinity of this double Riemann sum, where we have the sum from i equals 1 to m of the sum from j equals 1 to n of f of x sub i j star y i j star times delta a. Well, remember, delta a is like that small unit of area for the base of one of our rectangular prisms. That's like delta x times delta y, or it could be delta y times delta x. We'll talk about the order of things later on. We're computing these delta x and delta y's in basically the same way as we did for our single variable integrals. Uh, so if we're taking our uh, interval of x values from a to b and splitting it up into m equal pieces, then our delta x will be given by b minus a over m. And similarly, if we take our interval of y values from c to d and split those up into n equal subintervals, then that'll give us our delta y as the quantity d minus c divided by n. And so generalizing this process allows us to define the double integral of our function f over the rectangular region r. It is just the limit as m and n approach infinity of our double Riemann sum. And so now we have our notation for our double integrals as well. We use two integral signs to denote our double integral. Below those integral signs, we have the symbol for the region we are integrating over. In this case, that's r. And then what's following our double integral is the function we are integrating or the surface we are finding the volume underneath. And we have to always remember our little differentials now. Now we're looking at a differential of area instead of like a differential of x or a differential of y. And so now we have a differential of the area, which involves both delta x and delta y, or dx and dy, instead of just a single like delta x that we had for our single variable integrals. All right, everyone, let's go ahead and look at an example of how to approximate the volume underneath the surface using a double integral. And so in this example, we're asked to approximate the volume underneath the plane given by z is equal to x plus 2y over the region given by the interval from 0 to 3 crossed with the interval from 0 to 3. So if this is our first time seeing this notation, know that that first uh, interval is describing the interval of x values in our region, and the second interval is describing the interval of y values. And so that's going to create a little square or rectangular region that goes from x equals 0 to x equals 3, and from y equals 0 to y equals 3. We're going to take this rectangular region, break it up into nine rectangles, and use the midpoints of those rectangles in our uh, approximation process. So one step that's really helpful for these double integrals, and this is going to be true even when we're working with our more general double integrals, is drawing a picture of our region. And so our region is the interval from 0 to 3, crossed with the interval from 0 to 3, and that does give us the square or rectangular region that we are trying to integrate over. And so our next step is to take our little rectangular region here and break it up into nine sub-rectangles. And the way we can do that is by taking each of our intervals and slicing it into thirds. So by slicing each of our intervals up into thirds, we are creating nine sub-rectangles that when put back together, we'll cover our entire rectangular region from 0 to 3 and from 0 to 3. And so now the idea is we're going to set up our little double Riemann sum to help us approximate the volume underneath our surface. We'll be able to calculate our delta A or our delta X times our delta Y using the nine sub-rectangles that we have just decomposed our region R into. And for the heights of these little uh, rectangular prisms that we're going to create, we're going to take the value of our function at the midpoint of each of these sub rectangles. And so we do have two sums working together here and it's important to understand how this notation is evaluated and how it all works. So to help make sense of that, first let's go ahead and label all of these sub rectangles corresponding to the notation we are using over here. And so we have these points x, i, j, y, i, j, and what the i, j are basically describing are like the x and y coordinates for these little sub regions. So this first little rectangular subregion would have a sample point being its midpoint, and we would call that mid-sample point x11, 
y11 because it is using the first x and y value of our uh, overall region. Right, we're basically using i's to index the different x values. So this would be like i is equal to 1, i is equal to 2, and i is equal to 3. So anything in this first column will have an i value of 1, anything in the second column will have an i value of 2, and anything in the third column will have an i value of 3. And similarly, we describe those second little subcoordinates using the j values or the indices for y. So in our first row, that would correspond to j being equal to 1. Our second row would have j being equal to 2. And our third row would have j being equal to 3. And we're choosing these sample points by using the midpoint for each of our subrectangular regions. So what are the x and y coordinates of this first subrectangle's midpoint? Well, it's going to be halfway between 1 and 1. So that'll be 1 half and 1 half. All right, so up here, our x value is still going to be 1 half but our y value is now going to be 3 halves. Similarly, in that top rectangle up here, our x value is still positive 1 half, but now our y value is going to be uh, 5 halves, or 2.5. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly fill out the rest of our grid here with the actual data points corresponding to the midpoints of each subrectangle, and this is what we should end up with. And so now we can approximate our volume using a double Riemann sum. It'll look like the sum from i equals 1 to 3 of the sum from j equals 1 to 3 of our function f of x comma y, which is x plus 2y times delta a. And well, we haven't rigorously calculated our delta a value yet, but we know delta a is just delta x times delta y. Delta x is going to be the length of our x interval divided by the number of subintervals in the x uh, direction. And so that'll be 3 minus 0 over 3, which gives us 1. Delta y will actually be the same in this case. We take that max y value minus the minimum y value and divide it by the number of subintervals we are slicing our y interval into which is also 3. So again, we get 3 over 3, which is 1. So remember, delta A is delta X times delta Y, but in this case, that's just going to be a factor of 1 for our delta A, or the differential of the area, once we take the limit. The way we evaluate one of these double sums is we start by fixing the index value for the outer sum, running through the inner sum with that fixed outer sum value, and then changing our outer sum's value before running through the inner sum again. So we're gonna start by setting i equal to one, and that means we're looking at this first column essentially, and then we're gonna add up all the products of x plus two y times delta a as we run through j equals one, two, and three. Remember, our delta a is just a factor of one, so we're really just adding up the value of x plus two y here. All right, so if we're at uh, i equals 1 and j equals 1, then what is x plus 2y going to look like? It's going to look like 1 half plus 2 times 1 half, or 1 half plus 1. So this corresponds to i equals 1, j equals 1, and now that we've taken care of that inner sums j equals 1 term or case, we increase it to the j equals 2 case. Well, when j is equal to 2 and i is still equal to 1, we're now working with this subrectangle and this sample point. So what is x plus 2y going to look like for this one? Well, it's going to be x is still 1 half, but now 2 times y is going to give us 3 instead. So to finish off our first little j loop, we now have to increase j to be 3, while i is still equal to 1, and so that's going to give us the point 1 half comma 5 halves to work with, where x is still 1 half, and now adding to that twice our y value would give us 5. And so this first row corresponds to i equals 1, and we've ran through the inner sum of j equals 1, 2, and 3. The second row is going to correspond to i being equal to 2. And so now we're going to work our way up the second column in our little grid here. So we're still adding x plus 2y together, but now x is 3 halves. 2y is going to be 1 again. For our second uh, rectangle in this column, x and y are 3 halves. So x plus 2y is going to look like 3 halves plus 3. And to finish that second column off, our x plus 2y value here is going to be 3 halves plus 5. We have to finish this off by adding one more row corresponding to i equals 3, finishing off that outer sum. 
So if i is equal to 3, we're running through our third column here. x plus 2y is going to look like 5 halves plus 1 plus 5 halves plus 3 plus 5 halves plus 5. And well, now we can add all those fractions and numbers up, and what we get is 40.5. And so using this double Riemann sum, we were able to approximate the volume underneath our plane over this rectangular region. And so in this example, we used midpoints to give us the height of these rectangular prisms that we are breaking our volume down into in our approximation process. But we might not always use midpoints. We have to pay special attention to the instructions for a problem to know what kind of sample point to use. We might use like a lower left approximation point. So we look at the lower left point in each of our little sub rectangles and use that to evaluate our function at and get the height of our, one of our approximating rectangular prisms. Or we could use an upper right test point a lower right test point, or an upper left test point. And depending on which test points we are using, we might get different values for our approximation. But if we took the limit, no matter what type of test point we used, when we eventually take the limit, they would all come to the exact same value, being the true volume underneath our surface.